Guys, Rick here. More issues with my 2016 Chevy Volt. This time, check engine lights been coming on, throwing the code uh, P0401, which is insufficient airflow. And uh, seems to be that I'm not the only one having issues with this on my Chevy Volt. This is a $1,500 quoted repair from Chevrolet. Um, a lot of people having this problem with their 2016s and 17s. I'm posting that on the internet but not a lot of um, tutorials and things of people working through that problem. Uh, another thing, this part's currently on back order from Chevrolet, so not only do they want $1,500 to repair an EGR valve on a uh, four-year-old car or three-year-old car with only 60,000 miles on it, uh, it's on back order and they can't even fix it even if you had the $1,500 to pay them. So again, um, I've tried clearing that, that code a few times. It keeps coming back. Other people are having this problem. It appears to be the EGR valve and EGR cooler. So um, after looking on the internet, finding not a lot of information, I decided I would try to see if um, I could tackle that on my own. So the EGR valve itself actually is very easy to take off. Only took about 20 minutes, um, 20 to 30 minutes for me to, to, to get this off. It goes right here literally sits right there on the front of the engine. Now I took the engine cover off. I thought it was just a little bit easier to get that in and out um, from the service bulletin, service manual. Uh, it doesn't look like you have to do that. You wanna put a catch pin underneath to catch the fluids when it comes out. And you do have to take this guy off here. So this guy sits on the front of the EGR valve. EGR valve sits behind it and attaches here. Um, so really only five bolts, two bolts, one on each side here and the three bolts on the EGR valve and then unhooking some of the things. Now, as you can see, zoom in here, you can see the carbon buildup in the EGR valve. You can also see the buildup here. Now, unfortunately, um, I, like I said, it's a $1,500 repair. Uh, this EGR valve alone, Chevy wants to charge you something along the lines of 700 bucks for that. Um, I'm gonna see if I can clean it. I did some reviews online and it looks like the best to, I'll link uh, to that below. Uh, some of the best things that people have used is purple power and then just carb cleaner, carburetor cleaner. So I've got a container here that will cover without getting the electrical component sensors. Boy, I'm gonna put a little bit more. It says that this is a closed, closed unit. I'm gonna let this sit for a few hours and see if that breaks any of that carbon, sorry, breaks any of that carbon up. Um, I'm gonna use some carburetor cleaner. I've got two different types here uh, that I just picked up from local AutoZone. And I'm gonna try to clean this exhaust hose here and see if that works and, um, and helps. One of the major issues that I'm having is here in Texas uh, with our auto inspection. You can see my inspection's actually out. Um, I can't get the car to pass inspection because of that EGR. It's got a permanent code. That permanent code in the system will not clear unless the actual issue is resolved. So I can't get my car through inspection uh, without having this issue fixed. I'm hoping that helps clear it up enough that it'll clear it uh, to buy me a little bit of time. Otherwise, we're going to have to pay $1,500 to have it repaired. You'll see here I've got some other things taken off. I've got the, um, I pulled the service manual off of repair guides uh, to see what the process was to replace uh, the parts. And in order to replace the EGR cooler, which you see right there, this is the EGR cooler, this box here. A lot of people are replacing those. Actually, they're, they're, the EGR valve itself, which I already have off, is, um, isn't causing a lot of people's problems. It's the EGR cooler. Um, now, that is much harder to get off. And in order to take that off, you have to take the, sh the um, heat shield off here. As you can see, I have the back of the shield taken off. 
and then the carburetor, uh, not the carburetor, the catalytic converter here has to come out in order to get that off. Um, I do not have the tools to do that. I could probably, but there's one screw way down at the bottom of this guy here that doesn't allow me to get this shield off to even attempt to take that off. And I don't want to have to lift the car. I don't have the means to lift the car here in my driveway uh, to try to get that rest of that shield off to get to that cooler. Uh, but if you want to try it and you have access and you have the tools, that's what you need to do. You take your EGR valve off by taking this guy off first, then taking your valve off with three screws. You release your, your shields here. You take those off. They're just 10, mil, 10 millimeter um, screws here. One way down at the bottom. This will come off. Then you remove your catalytic converter, and then you'll gain access there to your EGR cooler. But there's where they are, so maybe you'll have better luck than I. I'll check back in with you let you know how the process goes of cleaning these have helped for uh, myself. But again, there weren't a lot of resources online on the internet when I was searching around in terms to where is the EGR valve located and then where's the cooler. And so um, hopefully having that little bit of information and knowing where they are will help you guys out, All right? So I'm gonna add this to the video just in the event that um, this does work. I'll have it so you'll have an idea of what I was uh, doing so you can already see the difference what I'm using here is just a detailing brush also from AutoZone you can get this little wire brush probably be better there's a sensor there you can see that that attaches here um, I'm trying to get that hopefully clear get some of the gunk the carbon buildup away from that and you can see already the difference a little bit of cleaning that makes so we'll see maybe this will all work so you can see the difference just using some carb cleaner and a small brush can make. Um, again though, the problem people have is, is that EGR cooler um, is probably much worse than that was. So cleaning these two items may not do a lot of good if that is caked full of carbon, but like I said, I personally can't get that off. Let's take a look here. You can see purple powder is dissolving the carbon. You can see there. That. A bit of cleaning just has only been setting for about 15 minutes. But it is removing a lot of that buildup. So I'll try this. I'll let this sit for a while longer, clean it really well, and then um, hit it with some carb cleaner. I'll put it all back together and uh, see if it solves our problem. So that purple power did a really nice job. You can see the carbon here on the concrete um, between it and the carb cleaner. You can see that it really did. I uh, was able to, to clean that out pretty effectively. Um, also back here there's carbon down in there but I really don't have a way of, of reaching that so I uh, let it soak and then use the carb cleaner and gotten a lot of that out so I'm gonna put it back together and see if that made a difference okay so uh, update here so you can actually just lay the <laughs> lay it on its side and put the uh, purple power in and let it sit um, you can see that's just came out of it from and, and I thought I had cleaned it pretty good with a carb cleaner. So I'm gonna let that purple power sit in there a little bit longer and then before reinstalling. All right, so it's been two days since I um, cleaned that EGR valve and I could not be happier because that, my friends, is a passing state inspection. So it worked. It, um, it absolutely worked and resolved the issue. Um, again, I had that permanent DT, um, permanent fault code uh, for insufficient flow 0401 that was stored as a permanent code. Um, the only way to clear that code is to resolve the problem and then do a drive cycle on the car. You can't clear those codes uh, just from um, resetting the check engine light or anything, and that's why I couldn't pass inspection. Um, and my inspection expired two weeks ago. So um, 
I was able to resolve the issue, uh, not pay $1,500 to Chevy to do it and not have to wait uh, on that back ordered part. So um, try it. If you've got the 30 minutes of time, if you're having the same issues with your EGR valve um, or EGR codes on your Chevy Volt, uh, take it off. It takes about 30 minutes. Clean those components that I showed in this video and hopefully uh, maybe this will buy you some time as well. Again, that EGR cooler may be caked with carbon, so I don't know, um, you know how long um, that fix will work, but I'm, I'm hoping that um, this is... A this is just making me so happy. So I'm hoping it's the start of, uh, of good things with it. So, so we'll see. Um, a little bit of uh, information that you might find useful. So the biggest problem I actually had, it took me two days after cleaning and putting the parts back on to actually uh, get it to where I could pass inspection again. I use an app, it's a free app, OBD2 Doctor. Uh, the free version of that app will give you access to the uh, incomplete ready cycles, which is what they utilize when you look at inspections, when uh, states are looking at inspections. Uh, st state law here in Texas will allow you to fail one of those areas, one of, one of those incomplete readies or uh, cycles. Uh, so check with your, your state. Uh, some, most states will allow you to, to fail one and you've got to do a drive cycle. So uh, for this, super crazy. You either have to drive like a few hundred miles um, or um, the drive cycle I did, I had to do it twice and super difficult. Uh, you have to start the car, turn your air conditioner on in rear defrost while leaving the car in drive. So sitting in the car with your foot on the brake in drive with your AC running and rear defrost on. You have to do that for three minutes and then you drive the car and get up to 55 mile an hour and you maintain that speed for three minutes. So three minutes at 55 miles an hour. And then you have to let off the gas, don't hit the brake and allow the car to come all the way down to 20 mile an hour. Once you get to 20 mile an hour, you have to go at three fourths throttle. So pretty much Put your foot all the way down on the gas get the car back up to 55 miles an hour hold that for five minutes that speed for five minutes and then let the car come all the way back down to a stop without hitting the brake i live in houston texas you do not know how difficult that was i had to go out at like 1 a.m in the morning last night uh, on the toll road where there weren't a lot of people and do that drive cycle because i i didn't want to wait for two weeks of regular driving to try to clear those um, incomplete readies um, and then one of them required that to be done redone again this morning apparently you have to have between 15 percent and 85 percent gas in the car so you can't be below 15 percent or above 85 percent or one of those just won't monitor so i had to do that put gas in the car and then i had to do another drive cycle this morning and um when I was doing that, it dropped all the way down to one incomplete ready. So I immediately turned and drove to the inspection place, crossed my fingers and, um, and it passed. And so use that app. You can monitor that. I'll put some screenshots of that uh, so you can um, check your own so you're not wasting money by going and trying to get an inspection. Um, you can see ahead of time if your car is going to pass based off of that information. So again, I hope all of this has been helpful and useful. Um, if you have comments or questions, please feel free to put them in the, in the, in the comment section below. I'll be happy to answer and help um, in any way possible. So good luck if you have the same issue.